Greetings to my team of 144, all star seeds, light workers, and way showers. It is 518-2019, May 18th, 2019. I wanted to thank all of you for connecting with me. It has been a real pleasure and joy to connect with all of you light workers and star seeds and listening to your stories, getting your messages. It has been a true pleasure and I thank I'm grateful and thankful for each and every one of you. The energies have been coming in strong the last few days. I know many people are experiencing light to extreme what are being called ascension symptoms. Now we're going through this powerful full moon energies, the full moon in Scorpio, also called the flower moon. Last night I was awoken around 1 a.m. with some intense energies now, there's some intense energies, which I just felt in the root chakra, part of this sh shift, part of this these waves coming in right now, have to do with the root and the sexual organs, the color red. So through the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, we are going to be exposed to these intense plasma waves that are coming from the central sun through our sun and penetrating into the field, into our consciousness. So Saturday into Sunday, the full moon, and then Sunday is one of the most important Buddhist festivals called Vesak, V-E-S-A-K, or sometimes Wesak, you see it, W-E-S-A-K, that commemorates the birth, enlightenment, and death of the Buddha, and celebrated at the full moon in the Indian month of Vaishaka, April and May. Vesak is also known as Buddha Jayanti, or Buddha Purinama, a Purnima, my bad, Buddha Day. It's a holiday traditionally observed by Buddhists and some Hindus on different days in India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Tibet, Bangladesh, and other Eastern cultures. We used to celebrate every year at the temple I trained at, the Buddhist temple. So it's a very powerful day. It's celebrated all over the world. And there's beautiful festivals, the lighting of the lights and sending up into the sky the lights, which symbolizes you know, the transmission of the light from source. The Buddha golden light, the golden light of Buddha, the gold dragon. So last night, I, when I was woken at 1 a.m., I just really felt these intense waves. I was woke up in sweat. I went outside and grounded into the earth, did some of my practices in the earth. Just felt the fire coming on, the intense energies. I know many of you are feeling it. M many people contacted me today talking about these intense energies, uh, some with massive expanding of the, the skull, the uh, pressure in the skull, abdomen, that's the lower dantian, many people are feeling like a bloating, a pressure, someone called me with an intestinal block, which I gave some energy transmissions through the phone. Um, I would like to help more people. I'm just very limited on the time th that I have and the chi that I can transmit to each individual. As I transmit chi and energy through these transmissions daily, 
directly from zero point, from my heart center. Many of you feel it. And they're coming through in the codes. So I, when I went outside and was doing my practices, some earth practice of the five elements, I was feeling these waves of energy, almost feeling the you know, nausea coming over. It also helps to drink like a green tea or a pu'er tea. That's P-U-E-R-H. It's a black tea, which is good for the lower dantian, for the stomach. And then also the acupuncture point I teach, you know, as part of five points of healing called Zun San Li. Zul San Li is Z-U-S-A-N-L-I. Li is fire. And stomach is the fire, the burning, the acids, that they burn up. It's one of the most important points. It's about four fingers down from the lower kneecap. You can do a Google search for Zulsan Li. Confucius used to burn moxibustion, which is mugwort. It's, there's different ways they come in these little um, cones. With a car on cardboard that you can stick to your acupuncture points and burn mugwort. It's an herb that's in there that burns and it puts heat and penetrates into that point. But you can just apply the pressure with your thumb, <clears throat> and you'll feel it. It's it may be real sensitive in that point, especially if you're having stomach problems. And you know, st it's a point for overall health. That's why Confucius and many masters. Uh, use that point, you know, burn moxibustion or apply. That's part of my daily practice. Uh, three, three points of healing. So I try to uh, well, pretty much almost every day stimulate. There's several points, which part of the system, the Kunlun system, is uh, that's part part of what I teach. I can't teach the Nagong system through social media. It's uh, forbidden, but I teach it privately uh, with groups or one-on-one. -on -one. But I can teach uh, Qigong through the Internet, so I plan on doing that in the future. Hopefully the near future, when I have a little more time. So I was, as I was doing my practices last night, and feeling these waves flowing through me, I have a wisteria tree in the yard and was doing some practices and connected with that tree and as these energies were flowing through me into the earth, I was pulled into, she pulled me into her arms and gave me a transmission and grounded me deep into Gaia and I laughed into the night sky, into the beautiful moon. It's very healing energies. Trees have a very, you can connect deeply with a tree, especially uh, Ming Men in the back behind the lower Dantian. It's where the Taoists say that humans enter and leave the avatar, leave the, the vessel at birth and at the final transition. It's through Ming Men, Ming Men, M I N G M E N. So in Chinese, Khan, water, Li, K-A-N, water, Li, fire, that's yin and yang, yin is the water, yang is the fire, yang is Li, so when you see L-I, that's part of the fire, Khan, part of the water, symbolizes water, the divine waters and the divine fire, divine masculine, divine feminine which are rising up, rising, rising, rising. So in this, these festivals, it's to honor the Buddha. And that will be taking place uh, this Sunday, May 19th, around the world. So uh, this energies from these festivals and celebrations and meditations are going to help with this ascension process. They're going to give us an extra boost. So you can celebrate in your own way if you feel called to. 
or just go into meditation, go out to nature. And it's good right now to stand barefoot on the earth, on the grass. I like to stand in the, especially the dew. The morning dew holds a lot of energy, a lot of electrons that are stored overnight. And there's, there's a field of electrons that surround the earth. It's the, it's like negative ions. It's good for the body. It neutralizes free radicals. So standing barefoot on the earth grounds you into the earth. And also the, the field is constantly being charged with thousands and thousands of lightning bolts that strike around the, the earth, around Gaia, filling that field with trillions of electrons. So that's part of that healing process of earth standing barefoot on the earth. So many codes coming in the field today. And tonight, the 144 is coming through, and today, 222, the 555, and 444. People are sending me codes with the 444, and I, the, the, the code was coming through several times for me today. And I was sent a message from one of our light worker sisters that new dawn of time is coming. Dawn of time. And within 24 hours, this was sent to me today. The new dawn of time is coming. And many things. That's symbolizing what my Sifu calls the the one law. Also yesterday with a fellow light worker talking about the law of time, which the law of time to me symbolizes the evolution of consciousness, the evolution of into, you know, from the single cell consciousness through where we are over millions of years into the full consciousness, which is unity consciousness. That's why we're all feeling connected to each other and to all beings, living from the heart, from the middle Dantian, from the heart center, at the center of the chest. So I want to thank each and every one for all you do, for shining your light brightly into the night. I know these are challenging times, but we are in this together. We are all connected. We are lifting each other and all of humanity, H-U-E. As we shift, we are in the quantum leap. And this is for those with the eyes to see and the ears to hear. This is a quantum leap of consciousness, of codes of the DNA into the crystalline codes. And the quantum leap, we are leaping from Homo sapien to Homo luminous, light beings. And also this is resonating with many of our team. Any feelings of pain in the back, especially upper middle back but it's any pain in the whole back, anywhere in the back, but especially in the upper back is the manifesting of our etheric angelic wings, and that's part of our light body. As we emerge from the cocoon as angels of light, angelic beings on earth, earth angels, we could say, the code of 37 as these as we emerge from our chrysalis into the crystalline these wings will spread and they will form fully 
in the light. They are, are luminous wings. So many people are feeling this. The transmission today was from Keeper of the Diamond Light Co Codes from Tanaz, T-A-N-A-A-Z, from ForeverConscious.com. Full Moon in Scorpio. May 18th brings the Full Moon in Scorpio. This full moon is considered a seasonal blue moon. It is, it is the fourth full moon following the equinox. Traditionally, the Scorpio full moon is considered one of the most powerful for releasing, cleansing, and transforming your life. This is because Scorpio is the sign that rules over death, rebirth, and spiritual transformation. Under the light of the blue Scorpion full moon, we are all going to be beckoned to think about where we can peel back the layers to reveal more of our true, authentic self. Rays of blue moonlight are going to pierce our masks, our heavy coats, our burdens, and help us to release and shed them to the ground. We no longer need to carry them. We no longer need to block ourselves from living up to the truth of who we truly are. Take a deep breath and give yourself permission to let it all go. Make the time to retreat within to the stillness of your inhale and exhale where releasing happens. There, allow yourself to peel back the layers. Allow yourself to let it all go. You deserve to let it all go. All full moons are powerful times of releasing and letting go. But the Scorpio full moon is a time where we can get deep within ourselves and figure out what is holding us back, what is paining us, and what we need to clear in order to live up to our fullest potential. What does it look like when you are living up to the fullest of your potential? What does it look like when you start living from a space of true authenticity? Who do you become? These are the questions the Scorpio full moon is exploring. And while they may not all be answered in a day, you can start laying the foundation under this energy. While this energy is asking us to think about our direction and the path we are walking on, we are going to have to get deeper with this. Scorpio energy is not concerned with what you do, but rather with how you do what you do. Your soul came into this life with a plan, but this plan didn't contain human ideals or human conditions. Your soul didn't map out what job it was going to take, what boyfriend it was going to date. Your soul is beyond these things. Your soul came to learn, to experience, to feel, to teach, but most importantly, your soul came for adventure, and it is up to you to figure out what adventure you wish to take it on. It is up to you to take your soul on the ride of its life. Your soul knows that no matter the path, the choices, the actions, or the decisions you make, it is only what you make of it that matters. There are no wrong paths in this life. In fact, every experience, both good, bad, big, or small, is always nudging you back onto your path and back into alignment. In this world, there are no wrong turns, just choices that you get to make every single day. Every day you get to make a decision about how you wish to see the world. Every day you get to decide if you are going to try something new or go back to the comfort of what you already know. Neither is better than the other. It is all a choice that you simply get to make. Life is full of choices and no matter what you choose, you have to remember that it is all part of the adventure. There is a heavy energy around this full moon that will be drawing us in and asking us to listen to the depths of our heart and soul. We are going to have to be gentle and patient with ourselves and allow the magic of the moon to do its work. If you simply take a moment to get still, the moon will guide you to what you need to release so you can become more of who you really are, free from the shackles of society of thoughts and expectations. You are more powerful, more beautiful, more successful, more intelligent, more wonderful than you realize. You are more in tune with your soul than you realize. So trust the wisdom, trust the still, quiet voice that emerges when you tune in. 
The answers you seek are not outside of you. They are not necessarily big or grand. The answers your heart and soul give to you are the pure and simple truths that often get lost along the way. The pure and simple truths of who we are, our purpose, our soul plan, greet us in the every day. Our life is not really about the big grand moments. It is about the small stuff that happens when we are busy making other plans. When we focus on the small, the bigger things seem to take care of themselves. So while you ponder your path and how to step into the fullness of your being, start with the smaller things. Start with the everyday things. Start with the things you spend the most time doing and see how that helps to slowly transform your world from the inside out. In a world that is always focused on the having of more and more, we so easily overlook the magic of the everyday. It is up to us to find the truth in this and find the miracles and gratitude in the everyday things. The May full moon is a tender yet powerful one. This is a time for us to explore the alchemy of transformation. This is a time for us to focus not on what we are doing, but on how we are doing it and to remember that we are always on the right path. Tanaz Forever Consciousness.com I'm Paul from PrimeDisclosure.com Thank you for joining me today. Please leave a comment below this video about what you're experiencing in this day. Have a happy full moon in Scorpio. The deity had to get in here, of course. Yes, sir. Speak to the light warriors. Yes. Tell them your story. Yes. Thank you, deity. Kunzung la me jalung. Kunzung la me jalung. Kunzung la me jalung. That was the Tibetan translation for kitty language. So thank you all. Once again, thank you for your love, light, your connections, for sharing your visions, your dreams, your experiences on this path with heart. We are living from the heart, which means being connected to all things, all beings, in all realms, all dimensions, all timelines, all as merging into the now. Asia, Asia Andromeda put out a video about the star children living in a more creative time. We're shifting from the concept of time as money to time as creativity, time as art. We're moving into that balancing the left and the right hemispheres of the brain into the middle into the in-between worlds where creativity manifests. I know they say that, that the right side of the brain is creativity and the left, you know, which is more feminine, and the left is more analytical or linear, like more masculine. But there's both within each. That's the yin and the yang. The black's within the white and the white's within the black. So we're balancing the two to bring on our full potential, our full creativity in this time of art, expressing our passions, <laughs> expressing what's in our heart, expressing out into this world to manifest the new earth, manifest the beauty that we want to see in the world, let go of all that dark stuff, let go of all the negativity, we're releasing the negative, we're purging that old false matrix, that suffering, that separation programming. We're no longer living in that separate state. We're all brothers and sisters in this divine matrix that we're creating, the 5D matrix, la matrica, the waters of divinity, the divine waters, the sacred waters, where we're balanced, the divine masculine, the divine feminine, 
are fully coming into play, they're fully coming into this act, they're fully coming into this story to uplift all of humanity in this great transition into the golden age. And this will be the eternal age of golden light, of eternal bliss consciousness. So thank you all for being part of this story. Thank you all for being part of this transition. We are on the threshold of the dawning of the new time. I'm, again, I jump around here. I just, when I get hooked on a transmission from my higher self, I have to jump to that timeline. So I'm going to jump back to here what Asia was, AJA Andromeda was talking about this, that these, these star children or the indigo children what I call the crystal children, because their DNA is already at that higher 4D, 5D crystalline state. They're resonating in that pure light, that pure awareness, especially newborn babies. They're transmitting the pure awareness. You can look in their eyes and you'll see the eyes. You will be looking into the eyes of God, into the eyes of pure awareness, as, as that light is transmitted to you through the eyes. The eyes are the doorways to the soul and the doorways to the higher self and the doorways to source in the appearance of the mirror that reflects back into yourself. So they could say it's the mirror of the soul or the doorway to the soul because you step through that looking glass, through that mirror, into that pure awareness and become that unknowable presence beyond the known and the unknown into that pure light, that pure bliss. Again, I jump to the other timeline. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to laugh at the flow. So Aja was talking about the, this crystal children not living in that linear time, that linear programming, but what she was calling vertical time, which resonated with me, the, the vertical, because to me, it is the levity. It is anti-gravity. It is what I call spatial time, or spaciousness where time is more of a flow, it emanates out from the center, returns to the center in a spherical manner. So we'll end this transmission with some frequencies directly from source through the heart center. So ground, 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 smile, smile, smile into the heart, into the organs, into the vessel. Fill the vessel with light. Today there is a cool mist outside, which is a manifestation of these higher energies. The crystalline codes are in the mist, are in the frequencies coming from the sun, the plasma waves. So take a deep breath, breathe in the chi, you're surrounded by the chi and you carry the chi into the vessel through the breath, through the inhalation, and as we exhale we release all negativity, all fear all negative thinking, all worries, all fears, all conflicts. Breathe in the pure white light of Chi and breathe out. You could see the negativity, the purge is like a black smoke, smoke coming out your nose. We tend to, you know, the tongue is lightly on the roof of the mouth. In the cave, the crystal cave, the yin channel, the tip of the tongue is the yang, the roof 
the cave of the roof. The dome is the yin, like the womb. So we lightly touch the tongue to the roof of the mouth and breathe through the nose, breathe in the chi, exhale the past, the negativity, the false self, the false matrix. Feel the light of La Luna, the reflection of the divine. The codes are coming through the moon. Luna, the divine feminine, the divine waters. Yes, deity. He likes to chant with me. So with that, I bid you adieu. Deity wants his hugs and kisses. Have a beautiful and blessed day and full moon. Much love, light, and truth. I love you all. Namaste.